and three sets of defensemen. Will he play all four lines? Let's watch and find out. Lindstrom and Murphy, the defense pair, and they deal with it first. Maltby and Draper, along with Darren McCarty, the front line. Samuelson and Leach for the Rangers. Steven Savard and Brent Fettig. And this is Fettig rushing ahead with a big drive. Oh, and it rang off the post. At just 18 seconds of the first period, a close call for the Rangers there, and the puck is frozen. Darren McCarty, a gritty winger, moved onto a line for this game with Draper and Maltby to try and add a lot of energy, but the puck was turned over in the neutral zone, and there's a handcuffing shot. Osgood had trouble finding it right off the stick of Brent Fedek. Look at the right goal post, and you see the puck carry him off the outside of the post. Almost a 1-0 Ranger lead on the very first shift of the game. Scotty Bowman makes a quick change in the Fedorov line on the ice, and he'll go opposite Peter Nedved to start this game. Do you think there'll be much holding back on Peter Klima today? He's played 13 games with eight points in the American League. has been playing on a regular basis it'll, there. It'll be interesting, Mike, if, whether or not Detroit goes with four lines. Here's Leach firing, and that deflected scramble in front. Bennett crossed by Ned Bed and taken by Sundstrom. On back to the point, Samuelson flipped it around behind. Ned Bed has it there, met by Larry Murphy, but controls. John McLean working on the wall. McLean spun one, but it's cut off and flipped out by Nick Lidstrom and brought on by Iserman. 13-year Red Wing captain slugged it on to Murphy, and he just played it gently to the corner. Brian Leach, captain of the Rangers, rolled that one along to the turning wolf, Samuelson. Samuelson just floated one past McLean and down. Hustling back his net bed, but it's taken short of icing by Matthew Dandino. Rangers able to block it. Sundstrom with a pass that kicked back away from Fedorov, and it started back out by Iserman. Hands back on to Brendan Shanahan. Trickled one off Fedorov. Iserman, Brendan Fedorov, he scores! At a minute 12, it's 1-0 Detroit. This is a goal that just simply shouldn't have happened against John Muckler. It's a three-on-two Detroit. By Popovich, the defenseman, had two cracks at the puck. The Rangers had moved in, and now they move back out. Shanahan goes over to the left wing, and you're going to see Fedorov just go to the net. Popovich twice took a stick blade and couldn't find the puck, and Eiserman made a great pass back. See, Shanahan's the right winger. He went to the left side, moved the puck back, and you could see the sweeping motion of Popovich. The puck was sitting right there for him. He couldn't get it. Watch right here. Look at 34. One, two, no. Great little pass by Eiserman. You make a mistake like Popovich did with Eiserman and Fedorov on you, you're dead. Fedorov gets his 15th, and Detroit gets the lead. Gretzky is out for the Rangers, and it's the Larionov Kozlov combination. And today, Doug Brown, because LaPointe can't be on that line, it has been the hottest unit lately for Detroit. Delayed offside is wiped as it's Kozlov circling at center ice. So 90 seconds gone in the first period. Fedorov from Iserman and Shanahan at 112, and the Red Wings get the lead. Punch back along, and Gretzky dug it out. And then controlled for the work back ahead. Little pass on by Matthew Schneider. Knocked loose by Matthew Dandino. Flip back and Dandino can have it. Leading out with Igor Larionov. Dandino went down. And so the Rangers can shift from defense to offense. Dandino, a defenseman, moving up with the puck. You can see he's got the green light by Scotty Bowman. A great skating defenseman. Ex-Red Wing Adam Graves tried to work his way through, but that failed. Draper dumped it along. Passed Maltby. Chipped along by Stan Netzkash. Centered, but plenty of red jerseys there. Line back ahead for Detroit is Chris Draper again. Draper met by a wall at the Ranger line, gave it off to Maltby, who put it on goal, and it's covered by Richter, and so play halted. So one nothing Red Wings early. We saw one matchup of Larry Onoff going opposite Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky, of course, the rated the number one player of all time here in North America. Larry Onoff, when he was growing up, they called him the Gretzky of Russia. So it's kind of interesting to watch the two go against one another as this game develops. The Rangers started quickly, hit a goal post, won a face off. Osgood made a good save on Leach. And then Detroit scored with the odd man rush, a three on two play. Draper and McCarty, as well as Maltby, they stay out there. Jan Golubovsky working in back along with Aaron Ward. Quad's first shift as a New York Ranger just moved out and blocked the shots. And the Rangers going with four lines. With Knubel and Malhotra tipped in front. Oh, and Lacroix crashed into Chris Osgood. Meanwhile, back ahead with it comes McCarty with a big drive and a pad block made by Richter. Thrown off by Netscash. 
And the Rangers can move it back out, and here comes Eric Lacroix. He has Malhotra, played it to the corner, but time was up, the shift ended, and the Red Wings take over. Big Jan Golubovsky gave it back on for the spear back in by McCarty, but it caught a man offside, and so again, play a stop. 17.04 to go, first period, Detroit ahead 1-0. There's been talk about the Red Wings making a change on defense, that they need to improve it. They've given up only three or less over the last 11 games in a row, but the focus has been on Mark Tenorti. Well, the last three games, they've won all three. They've outscored the opposition. Detroit has 11-5. to five. They're giving up fewer chances against, and no, they're not going to make a deal for, for Mark Tenorti, even though he would look good on the Detroit defense is an expensive player. I think he's going to stay right in Washington. Mike, he's not going. Detroit is not shopping for Mark Tenorti. It's just a fact. We'll return to Madison Square Garden. Right wing career in 1985. He's playing with Thomas Holmstrom and Stacy Roost. It's the fourth line for Detroit. Again, Klima's last goal as a Red Wing was in 1989, scored by Detroit at Maple Leaf Gardens. The fourth line for Detroit getting their first shift. John Muckler, the home coach, the Rangers coach, saw that. So he made a quick change and now put Gretzky's line on the ice to go against this fourth line of Detroit as Muckler's trying to play the offensive percentage. It is Matthew Dandino flipping, and now the Red Wings will make a change of their own. Now they want better off an Iceman to go against Gretzky. So Klima's first shift lasted about six seconds. Gretzky yanks it on. Harvey a blast, and a save made by Osgood on a scorching drive by Harvey. Wolf Samuelson with a pass that came to Harvey and then on back. There are rumors all over about defensemen, and one of them has Ulf Samuelson headed to Detroit. Well, he's unrestricted. In other words, at the end of the season, or July 1st, let's put it that way, he can go anywhere he wants if he's not signed as a New York Ranger, as is Adam Graves. Up down, played along by Fedick, but he was spun off, and there'll be a penalty coming up. The first one by Paul Dvorsky this afternoon at 348. Power play will be coming up to the Rangers. Oh, nice. What I like about Detroit's penalty kill for about five years now, they've been in the top five. This is a great penalty killing unit. They always use the same people up front killing the penalty. Same pairs, actually. And that gives them real good cohesiveness. Yeah, fourth overall, basically, you're talking about this recent dry stretch, the second half of the season. Here's, here's one of the pairs, Draper and Multi. They always work together. Always work together. Eiserman always works with McCarty. This has been going on for a long time now, Mike. Won't be checked off by John McLean, and now the Rangers can move it back out, and a penalty coming up. John McLean's going to go. How about this for penalty killing? The two forwards, Draper and Maltby, got it going. Draper had gone to the bench for a change. Maltby stayed out there and went to work, and John McLean gets called, and that knocks off the power play for the Rangers. They still had 121 to go on it. John McLean glaring over at the referee. There you can see Maltby working as Draper's going to the bench for a change. McLean was basically picking Maltby off. Maltby went down as Nedved wanted to carry the puck. See McLean holding up Maltby? And down he went. Maltby had a hold of McLean's stick at the same time. Calls made. We have four on four now. Well, Igor Larionov to take the draw for Detroit. They wanted to get Klima about 20 points and put him with Larry Onoff because he'll get plenty of wonderful passes. Oh. Is there anyone well, better? Yeah, maybe Gretzky. That's right. about it. Those two guys. Larry Onoff just, he, he gets the team going in one direction and passes the puck back in the opposite direction all the time and catches everybody. We so get he goes back, Mike. He doesn't do it. It is not normal. You get to see both of those guys today. Terrific here is Nick Murphy from putting him back in. Osgood rolling it back along. Jamie McCowan flicked it. A little bit of traffic, though, and trouble. Dan Deneau closed off. 45 seconds to four on four. Will end. Puck back to Leach. Gives it on across. Matthew Schneider spun. Around for Sundstrom. Savard, Sundstrom. Oh, and Leach a point-blank shot that is stopped by Osgood. Hurried ahead now by the Red Wings. Moving on is Dan Deneau. Big drive and a save made by Richter. Now it's the Rangers' turn. Leach moving back on. Leach trying to shake by Lindstrom, but can't do it. So now Slava Kozlov. Kozlov pass, tip, but it came back over to Lindstrom. Now Leach with a strong start to the game for the Rangers. has had two shots now, and Osgood made his best save of the period. He robbed him. This is Gretzky. Feeding one across. Popovich moving in. Backhander save. Rebound pop through the crease. A penalty coming up. The power play is on for Detroit right now, but finally it's touched, and we get a stoppage. I think Doug Brown's going to go, an interference called. He knocks Stevens into the backboards, in behind 
Chris Osgood. So Brown goes for two. Leach moved into the slot. He yelled Sonny. He was talking about Nicholas Sundstrom, who has the puck. And right now he yells Sonny. And sure enough, there's the pass, and Osgood with a brilliant save. Nice, nice read by Chris Osgood. And here you'll see the Rangers moving in again. That's Popovich, the defenseman. A couple of saves again, and there's Brown. He's being called for the penalty as he knocked down Kevin Stevens. Boy, you saw that first one ring off the post, and you thought this is going to be an offensive oh, Ranger day. Well, I saw the first one go off the post, and then I saw Osgood battle another shot where he didn't look comfortable. That was the Todd Harvey shot. And then I'm saying to myself, I wonder if Osgood's going to be comfortable in this game. And then all of a sudden he comes up with a huge save on Brian Leach, and you start thinking, you know what? Osgood looks really good now. <laughs> For a side, Nedved and Gretzky, as well as Leach and Wolf Samuelson. Shanahan, as well as Iserman, who brings it to neutral ice. Iserman faked the drive and then was defended well by Leach. Ranger captain looks back up ice in a four on four situation. 15 seconds from now, the power play begins and the puck skittering all over for Leach. He's got Nedved, peels off. Leach flipped it along to Gretzky, tried for Ned Bed, defended well by Larry Murphy, and Murphy advances back up to Shanahan. Moving on with Iserman, Shanahan, fire, save, rebound, on, oh, it's shoved wide, thrown to the front again, they score! The bank shot by Iserman. And it is a shorthanded goal for Detroit. Mike, I think Iserman did this on purpose. He had a great chance on the rebound of the Shanahan shot. Detroit is countering like crazy today. It started with good defensive play. Watch this rocket. Here's Eisenman with an open side and missed. Now he looks, and I think he knocked it in off somebody in front on purpose, either Nedved or Richter. There's Eisenman. He had the open side just missed, and he knew that with Richter out of the play, he may be able to just bank it in off somebody. I think it may have hit Nedved, who was back right tight to the goal post. Shanahan had such a hard shot. When he hits the net, and he's fifth in the league in shots on goal, that when he hits the net, it's really hard to handle. It was a big, juicy rebound and a shorthanded goal. Eisenman's got a goal, plus an assist already. Boy, sarcastic applause for Richter after about 120 footer came in on his goal while you were watching that replay. Leach flung that one to the corner, it went off McCarty. Harvey trying to shake loose there. Nets cash pushed it along. Savard. But trouble, so Graves, then around behind. Out in front to Graves, and a shot is answered by Osgood. Dumped back, but Leach kept it alive, though it's flung back in. And that went off Ward, and then is played along by McCarty, but he couldn't get it out. He had better off breaking. Graves tries to play through and can't. Circling with it, controlling as Savard wheels around the wagon. Savard circling again, got it back. And then Sundstrom a shot that is blocked away by Jamie McCowan. Away from Harvey, but to Leach, wheels, and it went wide. Boy, Osgood was all the way down because he had to get down to C. Fed back over for Leach again. Down to the last 15 of the power play. Rangers on the attack, but they trail by two here early. Matthew Schneider across. Fed for Graves, chipped high in the air, and it popped back over near Harvey. A lot of good puck movement, but no shots on goal. That's defended very well. Those penalty killers and then even strength play kept the Rangers to the outside the whole time. Shots are seven to six in favor of Detroit. Penalty time is up and eight minutes played in the first period at Madison Square Garden. Hacked down by Brown, drilled back in by John McClain. Lindstrom fires it around and it chipped off the stick of Baldby. Kept alive by Samuelson, on for Sundstrom. Sundstrom locked up, coming by as Lindstrom, but it's taken away by Brown on the intercept to Maltby. Kirk Maltby just throws it back to the Popovich corner. Brown going after him, and Roll blocked into the glass. Nedved trying to shake away from Maltby. Chased off, and they shoulder. Swung on back, just away from Draper, and brought out by the Rangers. They've got a three-on-two. Peter Nedved moving it ahead, gets it on to Sundstrom. Shooting! Snapped out of the air by Osgood. 11-19 left in the first 2 nothing Detroit. Ginger ale. Out. Here compared to a five this season. Five above 500. 
the Rangers are five below, and that was the case last year at this very same point in the season. Scotty Bowman and the coaching staff for Detroit, however, have been putting the hammer down over the last few weeks. Practices have been tougher, more demanding, and they're getting their game back. Tamer's shot glanced off the glass. Flipped back ahead, but gloved down by John McClain. Veteran right winger tossed it back in. Control by Lidstrom, played it back ahead for Peter Klima. Angled it across, but it's behind Kozlov, and then tucked on back. Well, the injury to Martin LaPointe is significant on a team that was seeking to find some offense because with Larionov, Kozlov, and LaPointe, they were getting it. Plus, LaPointe was Boy, red hot on the power play. Red hot on the power play for Detroit. Kind of doing what Shanahan had been doing last year on the power play for the Red Wings. True enough. In the last nine games, he had gotten four power play goals, and the unit had come up with 11. He had 11 goals from the line over nine games. You aren't having a problem. That's centered out for Klima, and it's deflected by Nedved into the seats. You know, the, the last goal scored by Detroit, this is Wayne Gretzky's feet. Watch him go down towards the goal post here. And you're going to see the puck carrying right off his skate blade. We back it up and take a look at it a couple of times. You can see how it went right off his skate blade. That's three, three of the last five goals against the Rangers have gone in off their own players. And I apologize to Peter Nedved. I thought that was Nedved when we looked at it right after the goal was scored. It was actually Wayne Gretzky. Popovich, Schneider, and now Gretzky have had pucks go off their own bodies into their own net. Three times now of the last five goals the Rangers have given up. It's just the way it goes when things aren't good. Drive and a save and then blocked down and diving to the net was Dandeneau. Richter blocked that one off. Penalty coming up. Murphy a shot. Oh, and Richter got that one too. Paul Dvorsky could not see the puck from his side even though it was still loose and now he blows the penalty that will be coming up to New York. Yeah, Fedek is going to go. He drove one of the players, I think Eisenman, right into the goal net. When Eisenman gets hot and he looks hot, he's got a goal plus an assist in this game. He's starting to win some faceoffs, and that makes him even more dangerous. Actually, it's Fedorov on the draw. Watch as you're going to see Brent Fedek right here move out to the point and then come back the other way. Eisenman circles with him right up in here and watch Fedek bump him catch him and now pushes him into the goal net and that's the penalty call interference at 940 the Red Wings with a two goal lead will have a chance to enlarge it with the man advantage Steve Iserman will be working along with Thomas Holmstrom and where will he go John well Holmstrom will go right to the top of the goal crease and it looks like Iserman's going to play the point on this power play he and Lidstrom the point man Lidstrom a shot that one kicked off of Richter and then his turn back along. Wolf Samuelson tries to play, but instead it came to Fedorov. Whipped it back off for Shanahan. Inside the box is Holmstrom. Now he moves to the front of Richter to try to block his vision. On the outside, Eiserman shook it to the corner. Kept alive now and worked along by the Red Wings. It's Thomas Holmes from behind, but he lost it. Back on for Samuelson. And Samuelson put it off the glass, but still not out. Now it's swept ahead, and the Rangers get it as far as neutral ice. Iserman and McLean canceled, so it's shaken back on for a little pass for Holmstrom. Tipped back to Iserman. 9.35 to go. First period in Detroit ahead 2-0. Fedorov and Iserman have the goals, and Shanahan with an assist on both. Shanahan fed to the back. Lindstrom hacked it back over to Iserman. Iserman threw one in front. Oh, and that glanced off a man at the front of the net. That's Popovich. I think got him right in the face. Puck Karam, he went sliding feet first, and the puck just went right up and caught him in the face. Jim Ramsey, the medical trainer, now is jumping out to Popovich to try and help him out. Let's check in with Susie Colbert now for this Fox update. All right, Mike, let's take you to Colorado. Lanch up 1-0. Philly on the attack. Eric Lindros to Eric Desjardins. This one's all tied up at one. Doc, uh, these two teams, they're pretty good. <laughs> you had an unbeaten string of 15, 12 straight wins for Colorado at one time. Colorado coming off a loss, though, to Phoenix on home ice. Popovich, you see him sliding down, and here comes the puck. Oh, it caught him right up by the right eye. He went down, penalty killing, with some of the Red Wings right around the top of the crease. He's still down. That's got to be a scary situation, knowing it's right around the right eye. Continue to watch this situation and be right back in a moment. Going for a run. Better take a jacket, it might snow. Good idea.
up. Hey, put that down. Whoa. Boy, he is dazed. You notice the blood on the jersey. It's the right eyelid. Might be a little hard for you to see the way he's turned. And it's the top eyelid on his right side. And he's being helped and supported a little bit to the bench. Rangers are without Jeff Bukaboom, a big rugged defenseman who's out with a concussion. He caught uh, a skate to the back of his head during a, a falling type play in the Rangers' last game. Popovich will go right to the locker room, I think primarily because he's dazed. You can see how they're holding up the back of his pants to make sure he keeps his balance. So the Rangers down to five defensemen. They've had a very strange first period here. Osgood has been real sharp for the Red Wings. The Rangers have put one puck into their own net. Now they lose a defenseman. Things get worse for one team, and, and Detroit's not going to hold back. Well, you talked about the bad bounces, and the players are reluctant to use that as an excuse because it's so old and it always gets shrugged off by everyone who hears it. Our play continues. 103 to go on FedEx Minor. One back to Iserman, given back on to Lidstrom. Lidstrom looks toward Fedorov. Lindstrom with the blast. Oh, and it ricocheted off a defenseman in front. Forced right back along again for Fedorov. And it's kicked back to the Rangers, and Nedved can bring it on. Nedved and Sundstrom surrounded by red and white. See, there's Peter Nedved, who's a great skater with the puck, slowing down. And that hurt his own, his own play, what he's trying to do. If he speeds up with the puck, he may draw a penalty. Iserman moving on in. Iserman just twirls now and cycles it back along for Fedorov. Sergei Fedorov got it onto Holmstrom. Shanahan at the front of the net. Holmstrom looking, dropping it back onto Fedorov. 22 to go. Iserman back to Fedorov, and they play some catch with it now. Taking some punishment as Holmstrom at the front of the net. Fedorov fakes. Iserman has, fires, and that kicked aside. Right back to Iserman again for the last 10 of the power play. Nick Lindstrom holds. Lindstrom a drive. Save Richter, and he covers. Oh, what a battle. Holmstrom and Samuelson. Yeah, Holmstrom is really hard to move. Look at 96 staying out of the goal crease. Legs are real wide for leverage. He's pushing Samuelson out of the way. Look at Richter have to look around him. He's looking around one side, pushing, feeling, getting wide open if he can. Good low shot, and then he got knocked down. Then here's Samuelson and Holmstrom again. Samuelson knocked that puck away. Richter having to stand straight up to see around Holmstrom. See how he's standing up? You don't want to do that as a goalie. And then there's Samuelson leveling Holmstrom. He's something else, isn't he? Well, the last game he and Leach got in a wrestling match. Yeah, and Holmstrom just won't go away. He'll come back game after game after game after game and just won't go away. He and Samuelson, that's some battle. This is Larry Murphy. Penalty time is up out of the box is Fedick. Aaron Ward able to keep it alive. Around for McCarty. Red Wings with a 2-0 lead. Glad you've joined us this Sunday afternoon on Fox. The other game involves Philadelphia and Colorado today. Full schedule every Sunday afternoon on Fox, all the way to the end. Schneider jammed it back along, reaching for it as Gretzky, and he's able to tip it back out. The Red Wings in the midst of a change defensively. Jamie McCowan to play it back over to Murphy. Lobbed high, and McCarty reached for it. Graves couldn't come up with it, and then it's turned back in deep and pivoting back for it as Stan Netzcash. Former Ottawa Senator, a part of one of the deals made by Neil Smith this year. Graves, drilled one that went off the glass, kept alive by Gretzky and spirited around behind, but Fedek can't get to that one. Red Wings get it as far as center, and it chipped off of Leach. Helping out is Wolf Samuelson. Big Swedish-born defenseman turned it back along for the pass across. Brian Leach with that, hurried it ahead, and moving in is Stevens. Big drive, and a save made by Osgood. Rangers continue to work the boards. Doug Brown had a piece of that one, but it chopped off of him and came back for McCowan. And Chris Osgood said he's real happy with his own play since Christmas. And you can sense that he looks very, very confident. As this game moves along, he's looking better and better. Murray Murphy at 631. Those are the scoring plays in case you're just joining us. Dump back in and old Samuelson will go to get it. He and Leach matched up on defense. For so long, it was Leach and Bukaboom. And then this year, it changed. Long now for Fedorov. Fedorov pivoting, handed back across, controlled by Lidstrom. Worked in front, but it went off of Shanahan. Kept alive, though, by the Red Wings. Spirited around behind for Eisenman. Allows it to go to Shanahan. Looks to the front. No one there. 
Shanahan got it on to Iserman. Still no one at the front. Iserman checked off by old Samuelson, darting over for Shanahan, and Shanahan is up with it. Shanahan fakes the drive and then dealt it on for Fedorov. Chip behind to Iserman. All puck possession Detroit. Oh boy, this unit of five, they're getting so tired during the Rangers zone that Fedorov's gone for a change. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're moving the puck. Well, Shanahan actually passed the puck to himself off the back of the net. They're moving really well. This is Shanahan ahead. Tried to get by the defense. No sale from Chris Tamer. Gretzky. But the pass misfired and went back deep. So Kozlov, 540 left in the first. Kozlov ahead Portal now for Dandino. Dandino right back to Kozlov again. Leaves it on a cross. Mariano couldn't take. Checked off by Schneider. But it's brought back in in a two-on-one. Moving in and scoring with the shot ripped from the left wing was Peter Klima. How about that? You know, Mike, I don't know who made the play just outside the Rangers' blue line, but it looked like the Rangers were about to head off ice. And as that was happening, the puck was stripped away and in moved Klima to score. Danny Cloutier, the Rangers' backup goaltender, will be coming off the bench to replace Mike Richter here as Detroit gets their third goal. Schneider's going to move in here and take the body. Almost an offside. Now watch Larry Onoff, I think, right here. Yeah, Larry Onoff stripped the puck away, gave it to Klima. Two on one, short side shot, beautiful inside the goal post. Three nothing in favor of the Red Wings, and how about that? Over 10 years between goals for Peter Klima and the Detroit Red Wings. Scoring for Detroit, that is. Dan Cluche with a 3-4-2 and two record comes in in relief of Mike Richter. The Rangers are six points away from a playoff berth today because Mike Richter has been so solid in goal. Dan Cluche takes his place as this afternoon he has faced 12 Detroit shots and has only stopped the nine and so his team trailing 3-0. It is Malton pitching it on for McCarty, but it's reached by Tamer. Very quiet here. Graves brings it ahead and angles it in. Cracked loudly off the board. He turned around by Maltby. Was double teamed. Puck held by Tamer. Wristed. Blocked down by Osgood and turned back to Tamer. Drilled this one around the wall this time. Went off the referee's gates and Gretzky played it across. Jammed by Netscash but brought out and the Red Wings have a three on one. Tamer is back. Murphy passes. Gets it back in the pass from McCarty off his stick. And then the net is lodged behind Cluche. I'd like to be Dan Cluche. You step into the net. All of a sudden the wings come down three on one. Dodge direct. Alby knows he's going to draw a penalty, so he doesn't do anything, and Harvey's in the penalty box. Now, I know the Rangers are down by three. Harvey wants to spark his team, but he uh, he just complicated the issue here, and Maltby played it very, very smart. Stand and Matthew here. Stand and Matthew. Eric Lacroix in his first game this afternoon as a New York Ranger. A pass just away from Fedorov and grabbed by Cloutier, and so play is stopped. I believe he's only seen the one shift early because power plays began right. and he wasn't out after that. So you see Harvey in the box now on the roughing wrap that he got. And Eric Lacroix would like to get out there and bang some bodies too, but he's not playing the power play or penalty killing. Scotty Bowman's team here in the first period got some fine goaltending along with one goal post from uh, Chris Osgood, and then they've really done everything properly in the offensive zone, and they've gotten better as the period moves along. A lot better. And Mike, it's interesting seeing Shanahan and Fedorov on the same line with Eisenman. Those two players were publicly reprimanded by Scotty Bowman recently. It looks like they're responding. Shanahan has a real something special to his stride here. There's a little jump to his step. And the same with uh, with Fedorov. Fedorov's been dominant on faceoffs here in the first round. The most prominent left wing goal scorer in the 1990s, Brendan Shanahan, has two assists on the three Red Wing goals today. Puck controlled now by Lidstrom. Just holds and hands it across. Iserman has it there. Holmstrom at the front of the net again. Lidstrom angles it off for Fedorov. Flipped one in front, and it pops in the air off the glove of Kluche. Poked away by Shanahan. Tried to feed it across, but Fedek in the way. Graves lifts, and it pops to neutralize. Past the halfway point of the power play as Nick Lidstrom hangs on as players are coming from the Red Wing bench. Doug Brown plays it deep. And even further they go before it's sent back up for Lariano. Long now for Brown. Eyed up by the defensive leech. Pass over for Kozlov, and he whipped it wide. Jammed that by Peter Klima, and it popped over to Larianov. Klima, power play time. How about that? 
shot by Murphy is saved by Kluge. Yeah, this is right where the point would be, except for he's out with a knee injury. So Klima goes right into that spot with Kozlov and Larionov to work the power play. They keep it alive again. Klima tried to pass through, but the Rangers can bring it out in the final 10 of their penalty kill. John McLean up the wing. McLean flipped one, and it chipped off of Larry Murphy, but could not be controlled by the breaking Nick Sundstrom. That's kind of a tough play by Murphy. He's got to be careful he doesn't deflect the puck into his own net. He played it beautifully. Oh, he's so good without, you know, he's not one of those robust defensemen, but he is so, so smart. John McLean himself took care of the rest of the penalty kill, about 10 seconds worth behind the net. So the teams are back at full strength, and the Red Wings take this opportunity to ice it. Clock down to the last 2:11 of period number one. Does this really resemble a lot of the Ranger games you've been seeing here lately, John? Well, the Rangers have had a lot of trouble scoring, Mike. That's one of their major problems. I mean, it's just a major problem. They've usually battled hard, especially going into third periods. However, here in this first period, they started pretty well. Then the puck started to go into their own net. One of them went off of their own player. And here they look real fragile. They're not playing a very intelligent game. And Detroit, the champs that they are, they can see when another team's down, and they've got their foot right on the on the jugular. They're, they're just going for it. That was Brent Fedick trying. He's the guy that rang it off the post in the first 20 seconds. Chip back on by Draper, and then sent back in by Jamie McCowan. The Rangers have scored the first goal in a game 18 times. This is their 53rd game, so it's almost one game out of three that they get a one nothing lead in. They come again. It's angled back in for Kevin Stevens. Stevens shouldered by Dandino. Brushed back over for control and thrown by Sundstrom, but is picked up and worked back out again by Jamie McCallum. See, Mike, scoring's a problem for the Rangers. They've scored one goal in five of their last six home games. The other home game, they scored eight and beat Vancouver 8-4. One goal just won't do it, especially on home ice. They have not taken advantage. In fact, they're under 500 at home. Are. Boy, does it ever work against them. And yet the potential for the Rangers was so great here coming into this contest this afternoon, and of course still is, because the teams above them, except for Philadelphia, aren't playing. And it's a game in hand they're making up on all the teams they have to catch to make the playoffs. So they could be only four out if they come back and win this. Boy, some good shouldering in the corner. Malholtra and Fedorov. Iserman ripped one, but it's kept alive by the Ranger defense in the last 52 of the period. Now, Holtra, 18 years of age, the fans responded to his physical play. He threw a good, clean check into Fedorov. Lobbed ahead for number six, Manny Malholtra. Checked off with Matthew Schneider, and the Red Wings just lifted on back. Well, they're showing some of that confidence that we saw all last season. Uh, I think Detroit right now is just trying to play a smart game defensively and watch them when they get their chance to counter. They'll take care of their zone first from blue line back and then just counter like a flash. Sons from a shot and it's sticked up into the seats by Chris Osgood. So Osgood is 11 for 11 and stopping them this afternoon. Coming up at the new Dodge intermission, Susie Colber will bring you scores and highlights plus an addition of choice cuts. That's all next at intermission. We have not seen the return of Popovich yet. Blocked a shot and the cut was a, a slight cut considering how hard the shot was coming at the right eyelid. So it's two of the six regular defensemen for the Rangers out of the lineup. We mentioned earlier about Jeff Bukaboom. Nets Cash, a young defenseman, is in the lineup for this game. And uh, he's a kid that's 23 years of age, so he's getting a lot of ice time suddenly. We just gotten word Popovich is going to Lenox Hill Hospital to see an eye specialist, so he will not be back today. A two-on-one with seven seconds to go, but Ulf Samuelson is back and arrives ahead of Larianov. And the Rangers are hearing it to assist. Better off seven and two on faceoffs in the first period. You know, Scotty Bowman listens to Shanahan. And pardon me, make that better off. Better off wanted more ice time. Shanahan just likes to play. And Scotty said, "You got to earn it, especially the first five and six minutes of a period. If I see you working, you're going to get some ice time." But both those players deserve ice time the way they're playing here this afternoon. They have been sharp, especially with Eiserman on the line. Larry Murphy closed off by Savard, and it's jammed back out by Fedorov. Worked back on with the turning Brent Fedick, and he tried to chip one back in, but it's an offside, and it'll be brought all the way back into the Rangers' end of the ice. It was offside because Savard, the second-year pro, was nose-to-nose -nose with Fedorov in the Detroit zone. And I see the Rangers start with Savard in the face of Fedorov. 
Kevin Stevens trying to throw a body check. You wonder if if they were lit into during the intermission. Kevin John Buckler and they want to go out there and, and spark something and get something going. Might very well be true. Kevin Collins, one of the nine helmetless officials in the NHL. We talked about how Craig McTavish was the last of the guys to play without headgear. Of course, he's here today, too. But Paul Dvorsky is another of the nine that go without the protection. There you see Craig McTavish. The T looking well. He's got the headset on. But the advantage to having the headgear is protection as well as anonymity. But Zaborski and Collins will be easily recognized in airports by fans whose teams have just lost. <laughs> Thrown by Brown, but it ricocheted off of Schneider. Do you think some fans take their games home with them, Mike? Is that the odd one? <laughs> Particularly here. Oh, they, they've had a rough time recently. The fans have been extremely supportive here in New York with the Rangers. They're really re uh, supportive. They are loyal but, uh, and they're yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, absolutely. But the Rangers just, they've got to do better on home ice. they got to get some scoring going. Gretzky flipped one that went straight up in the air, jabbed around behind, and Jamie McCowan has it. When Bob McCammon was coaching Philadelphia, in addition to mentioning Smurfs, he also said you could play a game at 3 in the morning at Madison Square Garden and get a full house. He's probably right. It'd be perfect for the time zone if you wanted to get a primetime game well, to Tokyo. If it's Friday night, that's usually when a lot of folks are thinking about going home. So they'd be, be available. <laughs> speak for yourself. I uh, used to be one of them. Uh, <laughs> this is Brian Leach. Over a minute and a half gone, second period. No carryover penalties or power plays. Full strength hockey. Savard spun that one back in. Chopped along by Osgood. Used to be. Here's Nedved coming by. Looks to the front, and it's jammed away by Osgood. In Detroit, with that dreaded 3-0 lead, a lot of coaches say, oh, my, 3-zip. And we may start taking chances with giving up things. So far, they look like they're paying attention to detail in the defensive zone here as the second period starts. Energy, boys, a good example there, Maltby on Sundstrom. It's tipped off of Jan Golubowski, and going back to get it is Aaron Ward. The shots are 13-11. No shots on goal yet in this period. We'll have an icing touch-up coming from Tamer. And so play a stop. Coming up next Sunday afternoon, the Detroit Red Wings will be facing the Dominator in Buffalo. We'll have that one for you at 3 Eastern. Also, Boston, Chicago, and Colorado, Dallas, another powerhouse battle in the West. What a game last night Chicago played in Toronto. Bob Probert, given credit for the last ever goal scored at Maple Leaf Gardens as the Toronto Maple Leafs will be moving to a brand new arena. It was uh, a great show by Chicago. They played a great game. Doug Gilmore, former Leaf captain, was very strong, and he scored one. But Bob Probert, who, who really has played well for Chicago this year, he'll be the answer to the trivia question for generations to come. And so will Jocelyn Pebo, the guy to win the last game in the Garden and the last game at the Forum in Montreal before it closed. Mike Knubel dumped it along. Reed Simpson, another fistic winger for the Blackhawks, had two goals in that game. The guys that like the fights, like Don Cherry, would have had a wonderful time at that game. This one fed back ahead for control by... Play to be made away from Knubel and tipped back out. Oh, and a breakaway pass that was headed right there for some control that failed. So it started back out by the Rangers again. They tried to set up Stacy Roost and Leach with a drive that went wide. And Roos just could not get the appropriate control as Lindstrom skied it back in over the shoulder of Leach. And an icing touch-up stops the clock with 3.13 to go in the second. The first period. Oh, and a chance for Stevens! But it went off of Osgood, who thrust out the stick. Now here's a chance for Draper. He's got a man up the wing. Maltby, Draper with a shot, and it's held by Kluge. That's uh, a good example of the goalie playing the shooter. Nets Cash was the defender back. He had to play the pass. And Cloutier makes his first good save after replacing Mike Richter. Rangers had their own scoring chance, and Kevin Stevens couldn't finish. Nets Cash will be the only defenseman back, as you're going to see Leach pinch down three zip. Two on one. Now, Nets Cash has to take his man out of the play. So it becomes a bad angle shot. Well played by the goaltender, Cloutier. And Detroit, who counter so quick. Mike, they just... Detroit's forwards, when they're on their game, they go from defense to offense quicker than any set of forwards in the entire NHL. And that was another example of it. I think Scotty Bowman has got his guys going in the right direction right now. One crisply back for Golubovsky shot that ricocheted off the charging ring. Red Wings make a change on defense right now. Came back on to Malty. 
Murphy and Lidstrom are out, just holding very deliberately behind as Darren McCarty looking to the front, and he's got Maltby there. The pass was tipped away by Leach, regathered though by Murphy. Long, but that went off of Harvey, and he jammed it ahead. Wayne Gretzky one on one with Lidstrom. Pivots, looks over the traffic, dropped a little pass. Leach curling in. Leach tried to draw it in front, and a kneeling block by Larry Murphy. Gretzky a little pass, turning the control is Harvey. Spun it back off. Leach is there behind to Gretzky. Flips one in front. Harvey is shot, and it's fought off by Osgood. Wheeling it is a shot by Graves, and Osgood got that one too. Gretzky fed for Wolf Samuelson, came back around for Harvey. Wedged there by Larry Murphy. Harvey cycles. Graves chipped it behind. Gretzky twists with it there. Gretzky always oh, swaggered loose and put it on goal. A scrap for it there, and Harvey had a try as well. Two great chances by Todd Harvey. One on the forehand, one on the backhand. Gretzky set them both up. And who's there but Chris Osgood, who's played very strong. We mentioned it a number of times. The original shot, Mike, you said that Osgood fought it off, and he did. When Harvey shot it, it was more like a changeup. Now, uh, here's Gretzky moving on Lidstrom. How often do you see Lidstrom get beat like that? A save off the deflection and a backhand save on the Harvey shot. That was set up by Gretzky. Earlier, Gretzky's behind the net, and he sets up Harvey. It's kind of a, a, a change-up shot. And if Osgood, generally, you'd wave your hand at it, your catching arm, and go past the puck, and the puck would go by you. But Osgood stayed with it, timed it beautifully on a change-up shot from Todd Harvey. Left behind by Schneider, hawked by Fedorov, and so John McClain can bring it back ahead. Tried for Savard, and chipped back to McClain. Away from Shanahan. Forced on to Brendan Shanahan, chipped it over to Iserman, who returned it. Now with Fedorov alongside. The pass chipped off of Fedorov, but he recovered nicely. Puck over skated by a pair and started back out by the Rangers again. Peter Nedved wanting to get by. Taken nicely out of the play. Big drive by Matthew Schneider was blocked off by Jamie McCowan, and so it is it's Dan Deneau. See Iserman play Nedved beautifully, Mike. The left wing lock. Iserman play left wing. That was a great play, and Iserman recently shut down Yager. He shut down Billy Garrett of Edmonton. Iserman, I mean, he's just one of the best, maybe the best two-way player in the game. 11th overall in NHL goals all time, past and present. 12th in assists, 10th in points. A legend in Detroit, but also around the league. The legend grows, it sure helps to get a championship, let alone two. Turn back out now by Brown. Back over to Kozlov. Then to Larianov. But away from Kozlov. Lifted back in by Malhotra. So time continues to dwindle. The Rangers are trailing by three. Six minutes have been played here in the second period. The shots are 16-14 Rangers. They've come up with five to Detroit's one this period. Detroit's one was a good close in. The Kuke grab. Nubel got it on to Old Samuelson. Off the side by Larry on off and lifted in by Samuelson. So Osgood with a chance to have another handle. Drilled it back along past Kozlov. It is Stevens. But Aaron Ward, young man out of University of Michigan, got it on to Brown, the All-American from Boston College. Swirled it back around for the take and the lead back out by Fedek. Fedek with the follow-up. And it's dropped back in and just gloved and held by Osgood. Let's check in with Susie Colbert for an update. All right, Mike, Philly at Colorado. It was 2-1 Flyers. Rod Brindamore with the shot. I want you to flick off the boards. Back to Keith Jones. Scores against his former team, Philly. 23-6-8 since they acquired him. Flyers lead 3-1. Don't think it feels good for Keith Jones to walk into Denver and score? That's a goal plus an assist this afternoon for Keith Jones. And, you know, usually he's the right wing with Lindros and LeClaire. But on that uh, particular play, he scored on a line with Brindamore. So, yeah, I think Keith Jones is happy going back in there. And the Flyers continue to tell people how good they are. Off this tie-up. Eventually controlled by the Rangers. So it's 7 of 12. Sergei better off in this one. Lindros and LeClaire, numbers 1 and 2 in the league in goals as well as in plus-minus. Oh, buried was Iserman on a check from Stan Netzcash. Meanwhile, Larry Murphy walks it ahead. Murphy lobbed one that skipped across the goal mouth and is tipped aside by Kluche. Savard fed it behind and Leach took. And Savard and Fedorov are having a battle. This is growing as this game moves along. Nose to nose. Fedorov 91 red. 
Escobar, 33 white. Here comes Fedorov. Crosses, eyed up by Fedick. It's fed back. Eiserman hurried shot, and it's chipped wide by Shanahan, who had to contend with Nets cash. Savard spun it back off. And it's lifted back down by Stevens. Osgood just scoops it along to Lidstrom. Better off crisply ahead, but that one kicked away from McCarty. Spun right back, and Wayne Gretzky on. Gretzky dips the shoulder. Fed one in front, and it was chipped away by Dandino, who came across to cover on defense. Schneider can't work it deep. Puck kicked along near Gretzky. To a side battle, and it comes back to Matthew Schneider again. Wrist one, and that just booted away by Dandino. And holding his Fedorov, looks ahead, and the pass went by Kozlov and down for an icing touchdown by Tamer. Fedorov a chance to change. He was caught on the ice for a real long shift. Looks on underneath that Yankee hat with a bunch of the little guys with him. Got a puck in a recent game. Yeah, he's, he's been to a few of these games. His wife, Nicole Kidman's been here with him. And so Fedorov right back on the ice. I think what's happened here is Scotty Bowman would like to get Eisen and Fedorov and Shanahan against Gretzky. Remember Gretzky's last shift? Harvey had those two scoring chances. Well, now Scotty says, if Gretzky's going to get hot here, we don't want him getting a goal or setting up a goal. I want to have my best unit on the ice against him, including Lindstrom and Murphy. Iserman feeds. Fedorov takes. Swept along Iserman. Cruising in. Iserman across. Oh, and he went down to the ice and shoved it wide. Battled for and worked on by Shanahan. Iserman to Fedorov and a good save made by Kluge. And diving and covering for the stoppage of play, the Ranger defense. Now the referee here can give a penalty. Yes, he is too. Todd Harvey didn't have a stick. He jumped on the puck and it's a delay a game. And it's a good call by the referee. Now look at Stevie Iserman take the puck here from Fedorov. What a brilliant pass. Iserman goes around, loses the edge, maybe stepped on the goaltender's stick and missed the net on the play. And then here you see the kick save on a great shot by Fedorov. And there's Harvey. He just jumped on the puck. That's a delay of game, folks. And he goes to the box for two minutes and deserves the penalty. Mike, Fedorov's on fire here. That pass he just made to Iserman was spectacular. Iserman, Fedorov, and Shanahan are just carrying the play every time they're on the ice. Man, those two guys, they're clicking, folks, clicking. And Iserman knows that he's the left winger, not the centerman on the line. He'll be back as a safety valve if the Rangers start moving up ice. If they have the puck themselves in the Rangers zone, watch out. That's creative stuff. So the day of the combination of vinegar and turpentine from the coach still works. That's not archaic. <laughs> Lariano chipped on for a shot by Brown that's saved by Cloutier. Yeah, good face off win, couple of good passes, and Dan Cloutier looks calm. The Rangers had Mike Richter put on the bench late in the first period. Mike, Danny Cloutier stepped on the ice, and man, he's been good. And he doesn't look sloppy. He looks real pure. You're going to see the puck one back to the point. See the defenseman backing out there? And then you're going to see the play as McCarty moves down here. The puck's dropped down. Quick pass. That's just a beautiful play. Not a good clean shot by Brown as he hurried it, but that's a nice set play off the drop. Schneider wrapped it around. Kozlov testing for it. Interceding was McCarty, but outdueled by Schneider, and Schneider just lifts it back down. And on goal. 25 gone on the power play for Detroit. Larry Murphy with a pass ahead to McCarty. McCarty looking it over. He's got Larry on up, but the pass tipped back out, and so Murphy will retreat. Sundstrom comes to the bench and is replaced. John McClain penalty killing along with Fedick as Larianov walks it ahead. Igor Larianov dropped it back for McCarty. Faced off by Fedek, and the puck squirted off Matthew Schneider. Chip back to Larianov. Larianov works the outside for Kozlov. Has to control in some traffic and throw back over for Duck Brown to spirit it around behind. Pumped back along by Schneider. Off the elbow of Murphy. And so again, the Red Wings drop back. 55 to go on the power play. 18,200 looking on rather quietly here this afternoon. The Rangers get one or there's a big check, they will respond. But so far, nothing to respond to as Holmstrom darts around behind. Thomas Holmstrom gained a lot of space that time. Chipped one that went off of Samuelson, swept it across, and so it's cleared back down by Sundstrom. Steve Eiserman steps on the ice to play the point for the last 30 seconds of the power play. And again, Holmstrom will go right to the front of the net if Detroit sets up. Better off moving in, wanting to set up, worming his way to the side, spun it away from Holmstrom and to play it as Lidstrom. 
Right back behind to Fedorov. Jammed one in front, and on the hey, backhand, hey. Brendan Shanahan. Now who set that up? Fedorov, again. Boy, has he been good. You know, you talk about league MVPs year after year, you should be talking about Fedorov. This year, you don't even mention his name. You think about Yager amongst others. He has the skill level. You should be talking about him. Thrown back in by Harvey. Going for this is Lidstrom, and he was really pasted by Harvey. I think that may have given Lidstrom a jar. Got him right into the rib cage in the sternum. He comes to the bench. The teams will as well as we take this time out. Philadelphia is ahead this afternoon of Colorado. We've been keeping you updated on that one and will continue to do so as Peter Klima beats it across but unable to dart by was Dan Deneau and here comes Gretzky. The Rangers got Gretzky's line on the ice opposite a different line other than Fedorov and Eisenman and Shanahan. Nice little pass through for Leach but he couldn't control and so back up with it is Draper. Draper got it ahead. Klima big blast save Kluge. Leach jammed it around behind and Stan Netzcash takes over for the Rangers. Off of Gretzky. Dandino chipped it along. And it's spun back in by Klima. Another obedient change in line for the Red Wings. Eight minutes to go in the second period. Shots are 17 16 Detroit. Four in this period for Detroit. Five for the Rangers. Very few chances allowed. The chances were low in the first period. I believe the total was only nine between the two teams. Fed on now by Federoff. A little jab further for Shanahan. Out of the board boxing, it's brought on by Fedek. Fedek trying to work by Aaron Ward says no. Eiserman can shift it the other way. Long pass was over two and almost three lines. Well, Peter Klima, watching him shoot the puck, Mike, it reminded me of watching him years ago. When he takes the puck here, he just doesn't use his arms to take the slap shot. Watch his torso turn. See how he turns it right back? His left shoulder was almost underneath his chin. And then he, it's just like a spring unwinding to get more power. When you see a good golfer like Tiger Woods get on the on the tee box when he takes the club back his left shoulder goes right underneath his chin so you got that body turn and when you swing towards the puck your entire torso springs which gives you more power for the shot. Kluge made a good save off of Peter Klima who used real good skill level in showing how you take a shot. If you just use your arms it's just the strength of your arms. You use your arms and your torso your shot has two or three times the velocity and quickness to it. The opening game of the 1990 finals in Boston between Peter Klima's team, the Edmonton Oilers in Boston, he scored in the third overtime. Puck fed out in front, they score! The Rangers have a goal from Savard, and it is 3-1. Now the Rangers won the puck down low. Lidstrom and Murphy, the number one pair, were on the ice. And Savard, the centerman, got there and scored from right at the top of the goal crease. We'll see if this changes the complexion of the game or not. You see the puck forced down low. There you see Fedek making the move on Lindstrom, and you can see Savard getting down past two defenders who didn't quite get to him. So Savard gets his eighth, and the Rangers get into the game. They're checking upstairs. Today. Oh, was somebody in the crease? The phone has uh, been ringing. Dvorsky, the referee, is on the phone now. You know, each goal is reviewed upstairs. And if the phone call goes downstairs, the referee has to answer it, address it, and this could be no goal. I don't know if there was somebody in the crease or not. Federa, uh, Fedek came around. Let's watch the blue. Yeah, there's going to be Kevin Stevens in the goal crease. No goal. That's a good call. Oh, they allowed it to stand. Explain that one. Are they ruling uh, that he was put he in was by Murphy? Pushed in by Murphy must be what they're saying. But I don't know when I saw that first view of him yeah. upstairs. There's no doubt Kevin Stevens was in the crease, but I guess it said that he was pushed in, so the goal's allowed to stand. Rangers, Rangers will take it. Savard from Fedek and Stevens at 12:40, and a grab by Osgood. It'll be the first break the Rangers have had in quite some time. Kevin Stevens was in the crease, there's no doubt, before the puck got to Savard. But I guess the only thing I can think of is they've been told that he was pushed into the crease. So Chris Osgood finally gives up one on the Rangers 17th shot. Try to take one more look at this and figure this thing out. See, Kevin Stevens coming from the right side is now in the crease. The puck's out and back in. 
I don't know, Mike. I don't know why that's allowed to stand. Well, the ruling was from the replay official. It had to be the only thing Murphy was nudging into him as he supposed, went into the crease. He's not supposed to do that. The referee's supposed to make that decision. Interesting. That's not up to the video replay official. He's only supposed to say whether somebody's been in the crease or not. So I guess the referee must have said he was pushed in. Larionov in front, and Brown is shot and stacking the pads with Kluche. My goodness. Now look at Kluche giving it to Kozlov. Kluche's a battler, folks. He loves to drop his gloves, and now he's got the fans into it here in the building. He has at one time challenged the New York Islanders bench. He is not without color. On comes Draper. Draper feeding big blast by Maltby, but he didn't get much accuracy on that. Now here's Stevens. But it kicked on back for a play to be made by McCallum. Blasted back in by Maltby and guided aside by Kluche. Luce came on after the Klima goal with 5.24 to go in the first period. Almost that much time left in this one. Just under the six-minute mark and time remaining. John McLean up with it, and the Let's Go Rangers chant begins. Now it's Sundstrom. Controlled by Nedved. Nedved crosses, spins, bounced off the defense. Chipped along for McLean. Jammed at by Nedved. And Stoked right back along by McCowan, and still the battle continues. Flipped along by Sundstrom. The puck control right now is Rangers. Put into the glove of Osgood. Now, how about the save by Dan Cloutier, who now gets a nice round of applause here. Great pass across. Here comes Brown. The stacking of the pads, and there's Kozlov flying over top. And Cloutier knows he has the Red Wing down. He knows his team has the puck, so he gives him a couple extra shots. And that got the people sparked here in Madison Square Garden. That's a good shot by Dougie Brown. Spectacular save. Look at Cloutier look up. He's looking up right now and sees his team has the puck. So he goes to work on Kozlov, who's going, what is this guy doing? They don't do this back in Russia with the goaltenders. <laughs> this kid is 22 years of age and has a lot of fire. A lot of fire. A member of the all-rookie team in Binghamton in the American League in 1996-97. So in his first year, he was a standout goaltender there. Has taken a backup role gladly here has come on in relief of Mike Richter and been spectacular. Chris Osgood just took his time getting ready for the faceoff to slow down the temperature here at Madison Square Garden. He wanted to calm everybody down a little bit, delayed the play. Red Wings lift and it's chipped back out by Brendan Shanahan. And so again, the Rangers will go back. It'll be an icing touch up. So back it'll come near Osgood again, and it's interesting how the ice is tilted slightly now for the Rangers. At least they have puck possession, last, which they didn't get before. Last March, Detroit built up a quick 3 0 lead here in this building. The Rangers fought back to tie it, and then Detroit won it late. I also like Cloutier comes up big for his team, shows some spark, and then at the other end, Osgood took his gloves off, put them on top of the net, rearranged his jersey a little bit, checked his helmet, put the gloves back on. Meanwhile, the referee wanted the puck drop. He was just doing something that was very little, small, minor point, but smart. It just calmed everybody down in the building and slows the pace down of, the, of whatever momentum the Rangers had going. Wolf Samuelson flipped. Net bed taken to the wall. Forced on further and out of the scrap and sent back down for yet another icing. Wolf Samuelson will do the honors. Mike, we've been told that uh, Paul Dvorsky, the referee, uh, it was his opinion that Kevin Stevens was pushed into the goal crease. That's why the goal was allowed to stand. So we now have that clarified. Once again, all goals are checked upstairs before the pucks drop to make sure they're legal. And it's not the opinion of the video goal judge as to whether a player was pushed in or not into the goal crease. That's the referee's decision. 12th year for Paul Dvorsky calling them in the NHL. This comes along now for Iserman. Angled ahead for Murphy. And right back in it goes. A couple of icings also slowed down the play. Red Wings have a sense that the Rangers have some fire. This angled back in on Osgood. What will he do? Scoops it around with a big goal stick for Shanahan. Rangers in the midst of a change so the Red Wings can move out. Brendan Shanahan up the wing with a little pass on to Murphy. Murphy cruising with it, trying to shake Nepscat. Passed it on for Eiserman, a broken stick there. On back to Ward, fires, save, Kluche, rebound, and a scramble at the front of the net. The Rangers are up with it. Savard flips it on, Fedek gloved it down. And Fedek just gently laid it back in deep in the Red Wing zone so that his team could change again. Kluche does it again. That's cash number three back in the lineup. And Popovich gone with the eye injury, so he's getting a lot of ice time. 
Luce came out ahead of Lariano. Spun along by Netscash. The Red Wings make a change, too. Some line jockeying here in the second period. Back on comes Harvey. Boy, three Red Wings on him. It's Gretzky feeding one that's just knocked loose by Matthew Dandeno. Dandeno for Kozlov. Hoisted on by Matthew Schneider. Dandeno prevails again. Now Kozlov. Rangers buzzing around, but the Red Wings break that with some nice passing, although that was not an example. Dandeno stokes back in deep, thrown back around by Schneider. 3.35 to go, second period. Harvey ties up and jousts a little bit with Larianoff. Jamie McCowan and Matthew Dandeno, the defense combination. McCowan lobbed it further, and it's nice down. Looks like old Samuelson got a piece of that. Play continued as the Red Wings played it back in. Leach there, closed off by Draper in a nice move. John McLean's pass skipped off one teammate, went to the other. And it's played in by Sundstrom. He sure didn't get much on that. And then he carries off Jan Golubowski in a good move. Bouncing puck still strapped for, away from McCarty by McLean. Golubowski locked up with Nedved. Comes along near Aaron Ward. Under three minutes to go. Good check on him by Sundstrom, but Ward is able to move it back up ice. Aaron Ward hands it over to McCarty. McCarty could not get by the Ranger defense. So Maltby tries to hit the scoreboard. Pop back in by McCarty and back down. That's effective. He gives your team time to do sure, something. Sure, it's like a, a punted football. And when it's up in the air there for the long count, it gives your your men a chance to get downfield to make the play. Well, it's very similar in hockey. And teams oh, practice that point. Their defensive practice flipping the puck in the midair. Oh, here's a chance. Savard tried to feed it across, and it's broken up by the veteran Larry Murphy. This is the line that has the goal for the Rangers. Osgood leads. Murphy there to get it. Pulls away from Stevens and drops it ahead. Knife down by Eiserman. Eiserman feeds it across to Sergei Fedorov. Fedorov shooting, and it bounced off of net catch. Chopped at by Fedorov, but it went off the pad of Kluche. Under two minutes to go. Racing ahead is Brett Fedick. Can he get there ahead of Lidstrom? The answer is no, and it's turned along to Eiserman, who drops behind and shakes the forechecking of Fedick. So, Tamer. 100 seconds to go in the period. Worked back on for Harvey. Larry Murphy coming over. Locks up with Graves. Kicked back on for Gretzky. Turned it along Larianov there, but it's jabbed loose by Harvey. Then played by Graves. Hacked away from Gretzky. Lidstrom did that, and so the Rangers must drop back. Schneider. That pinball. Might have been a two-line pass, but dropping way back to turn it back over is Harvey along the leech. Graves chopped. During the final minute of the period, Kozlov steps by one. His pass is tipped aside, but it's Dandeno cruising in. Shooting, and that hit the outside of the goal near the post. Final minute of play, and it's Adam Graves. Graves pestered from behind and checked off by Kozlov, and Kozlov got it away. Red Wings move right back, and it's Brown dropping on for Larianov. Flips for Brown, but instead it's Matthew Schneider. Schneider in the last 45, got it on to McLean. For Ned Bed, hacked away by McCowan, and spun into the seats by Dandeno. Clock stopped with 39.3 to go in the second period. Detroit up by two. Adolphus Bush went to Germany every summer looking at different breweries, and he wrote a series of letters back to his son. September the 20th, 1897. I would advise that we buy the finest growths of barley as soon as we can. We cannot make fine malt from inferior barley, and we cannot make fine beer from inferior malt. What makes Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich so good? The whole filet of chicken. Juicy and white. Now see, this is a good piece of chicken. How about that sauce? The sauce is great. Creamy. It tastes like ranch. With bacon. I like your chicken sandwich there, Thomas. Please keep this in the repertoire. In the what? The repertoire. What's your next question? Do you like it? I sampled it. I loved it. I'm an American. It's back. Wendy's Monterey Ranch chicken sandwich. Dave, don't let you down. <laughs> 
Among the vast array of transportation options, some of the greatest can be found here. The Chrysler and Plymouth minivans. From the luxurious Chrysler Town and Country to Voyager, America's lowest priced minivan with air and room for seven. We've got America's largest choice of minivans. Chrysler, we made the minivan what it is today. Now get a thousand cash allowance or 1.9% APR on any Chrysler minivan. Red Wings up by two, the final 40 seconds of this period. The puck fed to the back for Leach's drive that is blocked by a diving McCarty. Playing for it is John McLean. Red Wings trying to feverishly get it back out. There'll be a penalty coming up. It'll be on Detroit. Rangers wanted a call earlier. The whole bench was standing up, banging the boards. What a job by McCarty off the faceoff to get out to block the Brian Leach shot. And then after that, there was a hit that went into Brian Leach, I believe by, yes, Larry Murphy. He'll go for two minutes with 26.5 seconds to go here in the second period. Rangers have a chance on their power play to close the gap. Coming up on the new Dodge intermission, Susie Colber will bring you scores and highlights, plus an edition of NHL Insiders. That's all next at the intermission. The trip to Murphy at 1933. And so the Rangers, who are out of this one, trailing by three, have fought back, gotten one, and now have the power play. Shot 21-18, Detroit in this period. Means eight for Detroit and seven for the Rangers. Brought on now by Leach. Pass over for the carry on by Nedved. Dropped it on back. Nice control by Schneider. Fires, deflected, another try, another try. They keep poking away, and Osgood has it. The first shot that Osgood stopped was an absolute cannon, a rocket. And then somehow on his back, he made three or four more saves. A little passion now as John McClain and Darren McCarty get after one another. Oh boy, did Osgood ever come up big with only 7.3 seconds to go here in the period? There's the Schneider shot right into the chest. Look at three Rangers there. Graves, McLean, Nedved. None of them could beat Chris Osgood. Watch the shot hit him right in the chest. Bang! Rebound, save, rebound, save, rebound, save. He made four in a row late in the second period to keep it a two-goal Red Wing lead. Osgood comes up huge. As a chat with Paul Dvorsky, did you talk to referees a lot? That seems to happen with goalies a lot. Depending on, on who the circumstances were. <laughs> yeah. There are some referees and goalies who carry on a running conversation during the game with each other. Here's a shot that is knocked down by Lidstrom at the horn, and that takes care of the second period. Pass through, and now it's a three-on-one the other way. It's brought back in by Gretzky with Leach. Knocked down in front. Leach up with it again. Leach able to control, fed it across, and a shot fought off by the stick of Osgood and played back out to neutralize. Oh, we got some action going here. But you know, not a lot of real what you call clean shots on goal. Some great action up and down. Detroit going for it. They already have one shorthanded goal. Played back in by Savard for the last 17 seconds of the man advantage. Six ties behind the goal line, and the puck came back out to one of the remaining Rangers, Matthew Schneider. Fed back off the stick of Savard. Turned right back to Savard. Got it on back for control there. Fed over by Netscash. And it's broken up by the Red Wings. And penalty time is up. And out of the box is Larry Murphy. Followed up, but just away from Draper and back down. Loaded away from Draper by Dan Cluche. Early going third period. Teams are at full strength. And the Red Wings have a 3-1 to one lead. Oh, a freight train hit by McCarty. And a stick came up in his face from Matthew Schneider. I believe it was Schneider, was it not? No, it might have been Savard. One of the two. Mike were battling with McCarty. The puck certainly did go up and catch him in the face. Or the stick to McCarty. Boy, a whack on Sundstrom by McCarty. Meanwhile, emerging with it is Nedved. Nedved jammed it on through. Stick flew out of his hands, though, and it punched back off for McCarty. Aaron McCarty tried to chip it ahead, but it swived over to Leach. Handed crisply on back for old Samuelson. Samuelson back on for Nedved. Nedved controlling, spinning one in front, and that went wide. Like Nedved grabbed up around his face as he tried to work through. Ward put it back out, and it's Wolf Samuelson banging it back off. Fed on to Sundstrom, drops it back, leech a drive, and it's blocked right off by Osgood. He could see it all the way and reacted quickly, and a faceoff will be in front of him. Well, the Rangers, 
who has saw a three on one against them counter as you see this drop pass by Brown not working the Rangers then have a three on one as their power play was winding down Gretzky tried to pass across and you could see Leach the defenseman up on the play couldn't get the clean shot now here's McCarty with Savard and I believe yeah with Schneider stick Mike that went right up the blade caught him in the face this is the last shot by the Rangers again it's Brian Leach in Leach his last game played here on Friday night he had over 31 minutes of ice time it's over half the game here in this one with the Rangers down to five defensemen and trailing Leach sees a lot more ice time again he's one of those players who just doesn't tire out he doesn't get tired like Yager in, in the in Pittsburgh he knows how to preserve his energy and has as much energy towards the end of a game as he does when the game starts what's normal for Gretzky oh 20 anywhere from 20 to 23 minutes in that neighborhood depending again if the Rangers are winning or losing Osgood held that one off and it spiked around Work back for Iserman. Pass controlled nicely by Fedorov, but punched away. Sundstrom did that. Work back out by Graves, but taken by Iserman. Plays the safety on back. 3.05 played here in the third period. Is back on with it. It's Fedorov for the big drive that went wide. Back along for Shanahan. Shanahan trickled one across, and Iserman can take it at the half board. Lidstrom. Very deliberate, back on for Fedorov. Then Eiserman crosses to the slot, shoots one, and getting a piece of it was Kluche. Again, that was Fedorov setting up the pass with a shot on goal. He has done that a number of times. Eiserman to Fedorov and a drive, save Kluche, and it's lifted along, kept alive by Fedorov. Got it on to Eiserman. A lot of pressure here. Eiserman a shot deflected away by Leach. And Fedorov did it again. He set up two shots towards Kluche, plus had one shot himself. I think Fedorov just had an outstanding afternoon. Rangers make a change. Finally, they were able to get the puck to neutralize. Draper guided it on back, and Larry Murphy connected back on to Nicholas Lidstrom. Blown high and gloved down. Matthew Schneider did that, and the Red Wings can circle and start back. Now helmetless and moving on in as Draper, forehanded one in front, and spun around was Doug Brown. Brown will step right to this one. Brown threw one that went off the defense. Curled back on for Maltby, then along to Draper. For Brown again, fought at a bit by Tamer. Loaded back through him, but it hit a glass support. Then back on for Stevens. You're not seeing shots on goal by Detroit, but you're seeing the puck in the Rangers zone, and with him down to five defensemen, and it has to have a wearing effect. Schneider with a keep. Quick shot. Score! Fedex! And it's three to two. Second goal of the game for this line. This was kind of a strange shot again, a floating shot. The Red Wings with no pressure on them at first. Can't get the puck out of the zone. Kept in nicely by Schneider. And here's the shot. The screen was set up right in front of Osgood. He didn't see it. It was a floating shot by Brent Fedek. There's the screen. And Osgood has to go right over top of his catching glove, top corner. What a play by Schneider to keep the puck in the zone. And a shot with a screen in front. All of a sudden, the Rangers are back in this thing. At 4.30 of the third period, the Red Wings got three in the first. Savard with 7.20 to go in the second. And now with lots of time to go in the third, the Rangers are back to within one. Aaron Ward, that one knifed down by Larionov. Larionov nicely able to control. Eric Lacroix, 28, is back out there for the Rangers. In his first game, not seen a lot of action yet, but the one thing that he can be effective on is hitting. Let's see if he does it now. Yeah, it's just over three minutes of ice time through two periods. Offside. Play stopped. Third period. Only a one-goal deficit for the Rangers. The pass across. Held and shot by McLean. And getting a piece of that, it appeared was Osgood. Worked back along off of Fedorov to neutralize. Leach up with it there, cranked it right back in and well wide. It hopped over for Lindstrom, finessed off of him though, and played back out for the Red Wings to attack with Fedorov. Fedorov posting on very deliberate three on three, puck left behind, and then he's crunched out of the play, so it's Nedved advancing it back. Nedved shoveled one, and that one blocked down by Fedorov. Out of the tangle, McLean tried to pass, but it is lifted out by Larry Murphy and are, all the way back. Rangers are trying to play Brian Leach as much as possible when Fedorov and Eiserman and Shanahan are on the ice. Graves rocketed it wide. Yeah, that's out of pure respect. 
for that line for the wings. He, they are having a good day, but they need some finish now. They haven't had any finish since the first three. And Mike, the goalie change made the difference for the Rangers. Dan Danoa shot, and that's fought off, and a rebound, and it went off of Kluche and trickled behind, but it's played back on to Graves. Graves flipped it back. Jamie McCowan patrolling on defense. McCowan flipped it, but Sundstrom was right there, and the two had to cancel. Good work being done by the Rangers in deep. Still, they strap, and Larry Onoff can step away. Advance back up to Kirk Maltby, laid it back in deep, and Dan Kluche out of his goal to handle. Hands it back across, but into trouble. Larry Onoff got there. He and Schneider go down, and the puck still loose to play, and Schneider scooped it on to Gretzky. Gretzky flipped one that's tipped back along by Sundstrom and grabbed off by Kozlov. Leach on the ice every second shift for the Rangers. Amazing stamina. Back on to Brown. Brown trying to work his way in. Cannot swing by the defense. Both of these teams are in the midst of a very, very busy stretch of scheduling. Rangers will wind up going out to Western Canada to play Calgary and Edmonton. Detroit comes back home for a couple before taking off again. Meets for the pass, back ahead. Brought on by Savard, worked up the wing. Brent Fedick cruising on in. Chipped away by Kozlov, hoping to step away with that one with Fedorov. Brought on by Brown in the pass to Fedorov. Rangers are able to get reinforcements back, and Fedorov doing a good job of ragging while the Red Wings are getting a line change. And that pass is tipped back out by Stevens. So Fedorov now with 12-10 to go. What a <laughs> Teammates. Yeah. <laughs> Back on now, it is Murphy. The retreating is Tamer. Bump high off the glass, behind to Shanahan. Looks to the front. Murphy with a shot. Save Kluge. And he held that side well as Tamer can turn it back out. John McLean trying to get there, but that tipped aside. Overskated, but McLean now recovers. That one skipped off Murphy and handled by Osgood. Forced right away. John McClain right there at the half boards. Chased off by Eiserman. On back to Tamer. Quick shot. Corral back hit and a And a big save and a rising shot by McClain. Goes up into the seats. Uh, Chris Tamer kept the puck in the zone. And Osgood kept the Rangers from tying it. Steven gets McClain. Osgood comes up big. Peter Nedved on a sweeping backhander has it kicked out. And then the puck there goes off of Larry Murphy's stick into the stands. But the faceoff's outside the zone. And Matthew Dandeneau has it. Back in 1981 at the All-Star Game, the Islanders were defending champs, and they had a guy named Mike Bossy. Icing called. Mike Bossy collided with Tiger Williams in the All-Star Game. Heavy thud. They were on the same team. Oh, boy. Last night, the closing of Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. Last ever game there. Tiger Williams was one of the ex-players they brought in. There was you know, 125 ex-players, great faces, great memories. But during a, an anthem towards the end of it, Tiger Williams was standing there crying. He, I mean, he had just tears flying right out of his eyes. It was very emotional up there last night. Everybody in Toronto should be congratulated for a great show. I sat down, Mike, in front of my television at 6 last night, and they finished after the game and the ceremonies at 11.15. I enjoyed every minute of it. They'll have another ceremony to go through at the new place on Saturday night when Montreal comes in. Another fitting opponent for them. This one thrown off, and McCarty. Boy, was really worked over by Olf Samuelson and comes back. Olf Samuelson, an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. Much of a shot at Detroit, words. do you think? I don't know. I think Detroit, I don't think they're looking for players that will command a fairly high salary. You know, they're developing some young defensemen who are playing pretty well. Every night on Fox Sports Net, it's Fox Sports News primetime. All the scores, all the highlights, all the breaking stories. Join Keith Olbermann on Fox Sports Net. Check your local cable listings. So it's rattled back in with 11 minutes to go and a shot by Leach deflected. Nedved tried, but denied by Lidstrom. Last on back and Leach there again. Wrist one. Oh, and it's gloved down by Lidstrom. And Nick Lidstrom can start it ahead. The Red Wings break out, and McCarty shovels it back along. Played by Lacroix over to Leach, then back to Eric Lacroix. Bouncer back up to John McClain. Time, time, time! So you could hear somebody yelling, time, time, time. In other words, you've got time to make a play, but now a long off offside pass. Time, time, time for Susie Colbert and this update. 
All right, Mike, Philly at Colorado, all tied up at three. The Lanch fighting their way back from a 3-1 deficit. Peter Forsberg, watch the pass to the middle and then keep your eye on Forsberg. Comes around behind the net, shoots and scores two goals in 59 seconds, but this one is now tied up for all. Back to you guys in New York. So fast they can't get them up on the board fast enough. The board here still shows 4-3. It'll change in a few seconds. Well, there's some talk that Colorado using Sackett and Forsberg on the same line that they may be looking to trade for another centerman to give them a little more balance. Oh. Maltby hands it back across on a three on two. Dan Dano floats one to the corner. A test on the board but the puck came ahead to Adam Graves. Picked that by Maltby and it bounces back off for Dan Dano. And on in one preseason game in the fall of 97 played every position except goal in the game and he has played defense 10 of the games last year he was on defense and he has been this year some too. Puck flipped to the front and tipped aside for Graves tries once more and it bounced over to Nets cash gave it up to Brown Doug Brown looking feeds one and a quick shot and then it's knife on the follow through by Draper not much came of the Kozlov shot but Draper made something out of not much. Here you guys. Here you go. Very deliberately now Ward. Rangers make another player change. It's tipped on back. So it'll be taken by Old Samuelson. Kozlov working along with Larianov. And the other forward now in this line is Peter Klima. This one guided back down, and Golubovsky will be back to touch it for the icing. Well, in the Western Conference, Detroit has a pretty good lead on St. Louis for the division lead. The question is, will they go past Colorado? They have a chance, of course, to catch Dallas. But Detroit, third seed right now. Phoenix on a great year, especially defensively. And San Jose on a murderous trip. Ten games, and they've won four straight. Look at the battle with the last four teams. 52, 51, 51, and 50 for points. And Calgary right in behind them. Calgary's really played well in the last two or three weeks with Theo Fleury leading the way and a, and a goaltender by the name of Freddie Brathwaite. Oh, baby, what a save by Cloutier on a quick shot. If the Rangers can come back in this one, that shot on Peter Klima will be very significant. Again, Klima, he's, he's had some great chances in this game. Glenn Murkowski working with him up in Adirondack. Puck floated yeah. right back to the corner. Topped on by Old Samuelson. He's at the Garden today, and if he were with Adirondack, he'd be in Kentucky playing tonight. This one chipped back across and thrown over for Golubowski by Larianov. Oh, was he stepped into by big Kevin Stevens, but it's taken away by Klima again. And then it's steamed right back in by Iserman. So the set by Kluche as we start to get down to the smaller numbers now. Scoreboard clock shows, as you can tell in the upper left, eight and a half minutes to go. Nedved flipped, gloved down, and pulled right back out by the defensive-minded Larry Murphy. So Tamer, twisting with it is Matthew Schneider. Ice cancellation. Oh, and catching the stick up high was Iserman after he'd taken that puck away. Uh, Detroit forced the turnover. Fedorov was in on the turnover, and Iserman draws the penalty. Hey, Dave, I heard you used to be a goalie, too. Yeah, I was pretty good. Where should I play? Play for them. Hi, Dave. Hi. Nice That's how I won the game. After a day on the ice, nothing tastes better than Wendy's Big Bacon Classic. It's hot and juicy, and with Biggie fries and a cold drink, now oh, that's a meal. Have you won any big games? Well, we did win that Stanley Cup. That's nice. Wendy's Big Bacon Classic, the official hamburger of the NHL. Introducing the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee. With an advanced four-wheel disc anti-lock braking system, it delivers the best stopping ability in its class. And that's good news for everyone. The all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most capable sport utility ever. And Four-Wheeler Magazine's Four-Wheeler of the Year. To help you remember 10, 10, 3, 4, 5 long distance, we're here with the third, fourth, and fifth runners-up in the Miss North America pageant. Now, they may not be winners, but you can be. Every call is a chance to win a prize, like CDs or color TVs, and every call is just 10 cents a minute. So remember, 10, 10, 3, 4, 5, where anyone can be a winner. Hey, you could be a winner. Dial 10, 10, 3, 4, 5 today. Matthew Schneider squeezed right off. 
from Eiserman and Fedorov, and then watch the stick of Lacroix slap right into the face of Steve Eiserman. Neil Smith watching from upstairs. It's a neutral zone penalty. Lacroix had a stick up, and it's a good call. Detroit power play is 0 for 5 with five shots. Red Wings have the lead. Playing the power play with it are Lidstrom as well as Murphy. Fedorov will work up front. Also up there, Shanahan and Steve Eiserman. Eiserman wearing that half shield, covering from that terribly badly broken nose. Shanahan back onto Eiserman, but it's blasted along by Ulf Samuelson off the glass and down. We should mention Ranger defenseman Peter Popovich, an eye injury during the first period, went to Lenox Hill to see an eye specialist. Not back in this game. Gliding on with it, Fedorov drops on to Shanahan. Shanahan sped it back to Eiserman. Eiserman trying to shake John McClain. Couple of veterans going at it there. Is it Shanahan? And then Eiserman. No one inside the box yet. Eiserman with Shanahan there, taking a little brush from Nets Cash. Very deliberate pass in front. Oh, and Fedorov tried to one time it. Graves knelt in front of it. And a penalty coming up. It'll be to Fedorov. As John McClain went down, and both teams will be a man short. An eventual Ranger power play. This time here. The Red, the Red Wings are ready to go. Schneider is delayed, 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 delayed. It also gives Leach a chance to rest a little bit as he waits for the puck to be dropped because he'll work the power play. Off this tie up, puck taken by Schneider. And then Leach. All these ice times as the games become so significant to the Rangers and they seem to be in a cluster. I think that'll work against them. Here it's thrown by Dandeno behind. Because they're playing a lot of guys a lot of minutes. Some of their veteran players, but Leach can handle it, and he shoots, and it's deflected wide. And a penalty oh, coming up. I think the stick was touched. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yeah, above the shoulder. You know, Mike, what you what you were saying about the Rangers and their ice time, what it is more than anything else, right now the Rangers are in the playoffs. This is their playoff is what I'm getting at. For them to make the playoffs, they've got to win games now, so they're treating it like it's a playoff situation. The Red Wings right now are playing where they're trying to really improve themselves to get into a good spot for the playoffs and be on top of their game. And they're certainly getting better as the season moves along. Well, Leach is closing in on almost 29 minutes right now. And he would be probably in the 26, 28 minute range if it was a normal game for him, but he's gonna be well above that. Cardi with five left on the four on four. They have Gretzky out there right now. Gretzky comes by the bench and gets a change in stick. But remains out. Power play is underway and it's got a little under a minute to go in it. Osgood tends and just flings it ahead and it goes back down past Iserman. Well, Outside play it would have been. Osgood credit. Almost the completion. The long bomb. It would have been a breakaway for Iserman. Leach moving ahead. Could not get through because of Draper. Leach passed it back across and curling with it. Walking on ahead is Graves bumped into by Malfi. What will he do this time? Play it back off the left offensive boards, but it's spun around by John McClain. Gretzky touched it on back to Leach. Looks and then whips it across. Quick shot by Ned Ben is just clutched right out of the air by Osgood. Osgood with a good save. A little bit of traffic there. When you're not sure in the other team's zone, throw it behind the net because Gretzky's always there. There he is, moving the puck back to the point. The Red Wings force a quick shot from the blue line, and there you can see the save by Osgood. Tonight on Fox, Elton John celebrates Valentine's Day Simpson style on an all-new episode, then get into the Valentine spirit with a new That 70s Show. Plus, you get the answers you've been waiting for on The X-Files. It all starts with World's Funniest tonight at 7, 6 Central. Well, through two periods, Osgood had only taken three or four face-offs. Fedorov had been taking them all. But Fedorov's in the box right now, so Eisenman's out there to go against Gretzky. Gretzky likes to sweep the puck to his right. Eisenman beats him. He's always been one of the best. Larry Murphy, but Gretzky looks for Graves, gives to Leach. Leach with a shot, and it deflected wide. Now Gretzky with trouble. Plays on to Graves. Around behind to John McClain. Looks for Leach, got it to him, and the shot wide. Two seconds left on the power play. Worked on over to Leach. Shoots one. Oh, and that canceled out by the quick pad of Osgood. It is Adam Graves to this now with the teams at full strength and five minutes to go. Over to Gretzky, pass in front, tipped away from Leach. Hustling back is Iserman, but arriving first is Matthew Schneider. Schneider ripped it along. Shanahan has to wait. Iserman's across, so it was a bit of a legal play, but he couldn't get in. 
And it's forced around now to the corner. It's one of those uh, eight-legged things on the oh, ice right it. now, Mike. Right near center ice. Oh! On back to the corner, it is Stevens. It's a little early. That normally happens at playoff time when you're doing something bigger than this. There's Red Wing fans everywhere. I think they appreciated the penalty kill by their hockey club. And Shanahan came back with Brian Leach and made a nice play there in front of Chris Osgood. Our director knows Kevin Collins pretty well, so maybe he can arrange for the sushi afterwards. The linesman gets the nice job of trying to deal with that, and the puck went almost right across it. Here is Draper up with it. Draper pulling loose, faking the drive, then shoveling one in front, and Savard got up with that. Savard moving back out. Boy, they're right across that, and picking it up is Paul Dvorsky. <laughs> Tossed it right away. Boy, what a move. But on now is Coslow. You going to tell us, Draper? Well, the, the, the linesman didn't want to do it, so the referee took charge. Nedved moving in. Rising shot went off the crossbar. Oh, Samuelson back on to Leach. Almost a 3-3 three three game. Lindstrom got it ahead. Slava Kozlov lobbed it on. Larionov bringing it in with two men breaking, and it's thrown away. Just a casual block away by Dan Kluge, who's been sparkling in the Ranger goal. Down to the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Rangers still need one. Red Wings trying for four straight wins. That one tipped back down on Osgood. He looks and flings it off. A teammate stick to neutralize where Schneider can play it back. Nets cash back across to Matthew Schneider, but it's taken by Murphy. Rangers in the midst of a change as Murphy skyhooks one back deep. Under three minutes to play now. Shots are 29 apiece. The Red Wings have the lead three to two, but here's a feed on for Gretzky. Cruising in, big drive! was deflected away by Osgood. Around behind it's Gretzky. Tried to tuck a pass and hit the back of the goal. And the Rangers will have to change. Uh, Dandino tried to short hop the puck and he had problems with it. And I don't know if Gretzky shot Karen off the post or not. It was close, as was Nedvitz. Back on now comes Graves. And Graves lifts it back in. Osgood saw it hop right over his stick. Flipped back along for Brendan Shanahan. Kept alive nicely by Leach. Still, they battle on the half boards, and it's Shanahan fiddling it back out for Maltby, and Maltby dropping it back in. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go. You try getting the puck deep every time they have this chance as Maltby throws a big hit into Leach. And what that does is make the Rangers go all the way down the ice to make a play. You turn the puck over, and there's a problem. Get it deep, and the other team's got to make the 200-foot trip to try to score and beat you. And we'll get to that in a moment. That shot by Gretzky, by the way. We did a little sleuthing on it. It was a save by Osgood with his right arm. A huge save late. Samuelson around to Leach. Oh, did Leach ever get caught by Malkin? It was slow to get up, but did he ever get hit? Back in the play here. This one scaled in by Savard. And we keep an eye on Kluge. He's at the hash marks now in the final 100 seconds of regulation time. Up with it is Sergei Fedorov. Fedorov for Detroit, tried to pass it, kicked out in front and had to be covered by Osgood and a little more after the whistle. A lot more. Rangers keep their two defensemen above the circles to try to keep the face off deep as the linesman and referee do a good job of separating everybody. I think, uh, was it Kevin Stevens who was in there? Or was I know Savard got involved with McCarty, Fedek, and who's that? Yeah, it's Kevin Stevens underneath there. As Osgood had the puck carry him to him, he was alert and just held on to it. That's when Lindstrom and Stevens got after each other. Savard, I'm sorry, and there's Stevens and McCarty, Fedek. Darren McCarty's a big, rugged winger. And the Red Wings do their job in front of the net. At the end of this game, we'll be taking you to Denver for the completion of the Philadelphia-Colorado game, currently knotted in the third. Let's take a look at our check of the game brought to you by Canada Drive. Well, here it is. Maltby on leash. Ouch. That's why Maltby's a valuable asset for the Red Wings. He doesn't care who he hits. Look Gretzky there with those long cuffs on his gloves. He doesn't understand why players around the league don't have these long cuffs to protect your wrists and forearms when you're slashed at by the other team. A lot of players in this league use these little wee the little weak cuffs and ended up having injuries. Keith uh, Primo uh, missed a game last yeah. night because he blocked a shot. Here. Right here, yeah, it caught him just above the cuff and on the outside of his wrist. So that's a 
That play where he didn't have much protection. The Red Wings, you can see they're scrumming over here to set up what they're going to do if they lose the draw or win the draw. Nedved, you can see he's already got his hand in a position where he wants to go forward. Now he's got the option. He, he's got the option. You know, see the Red Wings? They're talking with Fedorov what they're going to do. Now, if Fedorov, or pardon me, if, you can see the opening there. So if, if Nedved wants to go that way, yeah, he's got his man back there. That's what he does. Matthew Schneider with a big drive, save Osgood, rebound, scramble in front, Osgood covers. This is for a side hockey because of minor penalties to McCarty and Savard for roughing. Oh, from the faceoffs, a pretty good effort with the two centermen, but it's going to be Nedved winning the puck back to Schneider, who quickly moved it to the middle for the good shot. And I think right here, Larry Murphy does a good job on Adam Graves. That's a hard thing to do. Larry Murphy did not let Graves, who's really good around the net finding loose pucks, did not allow Graves to get comfortable to find the puck. Good job by Larry Murphy. Another big faceoff. Ned Bed to take it. Off the tie up, though, it's Sergei Fedorov pivoting. Red Wings have won 12 more faceoffs than the Rangers and some critical ones now in the third. Murphy wedged to the board, still in the goal crease is Kluche at the other end, 115 to go. He's at the hash marks now as Ned Bed. Turns around behind and feeds back over to Leach. He heads to the bench. Big shot! And it went wide by Matthew Schneider. So six attackers and the net empty at the other end. Flip back along and moving with it is Gretzky. Flip one in front and it went off the goal stick of Osgood. Now kept alive by Matthew Schneider. Schneider feeds back along to Brian Leach. Back to Schneider. Drive deflected high by Fedorov who dove in front of it. Fed back out in front and it went off the stick of Nedved. Thrown by Lidstrom. Nedved pawed it down off the rail. Still digging for it around behind to Gretzky. Down to the last 40 of regulation time. Red Wings can't clear. Puck popped ahead and now they can. It's turned back to Steve Iserman with the net empty. Iserman cruising on in. Drops it back. Fedorov back to Iserman. Looks for Lidstrom. Score! Well, great block by Fedorov in the Detroit zone on a slap shot from the blue line. Fedorov went down on his side and blocked the shot. I think Fedorov's had a great game. And then Ian Eisenman wanted to be so unselfish that they kept passing the puck with the empty net. You knew Eisenman was going to pass it. Then Fedorov moved it back again. And finally, it was put in by the defenseman. So it's an empty net goal with 26.4 seconds to go, and Detroit will put this one away. I think Fedorov's been awesome. He's taken a couple of penalties, yes, but so what? That means he's in the game. Now watch the puck get moved to the middle. Look at Fedorov. Bang. That was a great play because there was a couple of Rangers, including Graves, in front of the net. And just after that, the Wings were able to move down and score in the empty net. Fedorov's had a great afternoon. Lidstrom from Iserman and Fedorov. Three points today for Iserman, two for Shanahan. Two points for Fedorov. And what a difference seven days makes in the Detroit Red Wings. Stevens is going to take a penalty, Mike. He tried to get at Maltby with his stick. See, Maltby's the one that ran Brian Leach, so they wanted him. Remember Maltby ran Brian Leach? It was a check of the game. The Rangers saw Maltby on here for the last few seconds, and they went after him. Stevens definitely was going to get the original for jabbing a stick at him. And then Maltby got jumped on to by a number of the Rangers. Maltby earlier in the game drew a penalty when Todd Harvey threw his arms up around him. Todd Harvey hasn't seen a lot of ice here in the third period. And it looks like the linesmen are going to be able to separate everybody. Tamer went at Mulby. But Mulby's at his best. He upsets the other team. Both of these teams are very conscious right now of their star players being attacked by members of the other team, legally often. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But oh, both you, of these teams are very concerned about it. You were in New Jersey when uh, Oliwa had a very aggressive game against the Red Wings. Todd Gill wound up getting a broken forearm from that. Larry Murphy actually missed the game after. Watch this in neutral ice again. Here's the, going to be the penalty there. See the jab into the arm of Maltby. That was the original call. And then the Rangers continue just to, to try and go after Maltby. Maltby doesn't get a penalty and doesn't deserve one on that play. Two Rangers got minors. Stevens and Tamer. Remember in Pittsburgh last Sunday afternoon, the huge question mark that was hovering over Fedorov? Oh, yeah. Well, you replace that with an exclamation point now. Oh, Shanahan yeah. Shanahan with a couple of good playmaking moves. Oh, their line early. Points. Their line early, Mike, was really good. Really good in this game, and it gave them the 3 nothing lead. And the, and the other thing is, if you really think about it, yeah, Todd Gill was playing real well for this team. He went down with the injury. But since the injury, some of the other defensemen have a chance to play a little more, and they played pretty darn well. Dan Dano and, and Golubovsky and... Detroit trying to find out how good they're going to be behind the blue line as this one 
winds down. What a game for Chris Osgood, too. He played very well, and I also think Dan Cloutier, stepping in after Mike Richter allowed three goals, gave the Rangers a chance to come back. They almost came back all the way, but Chris Osgood came up real, real big for their team. And that guy, Sergei Fedorov, he was dominant in a lot of different areas in this game. Not only the goal and the assist, blocking shots, face-offs, he had a great day. Today's new Dodge player of the game is Sergei Fedorov. Final score in this contest, the Detroit Red Wings four.